Hello everyone, Henry from Enterprise DNA here. In this video, we're going to be learning how to use the concurrent function within Power Apps. The concurrent function, as the name suggests, allow you to run functions concurrently within Power Apps. Usually when you run any sort of process or workflow, they need to run right after one another. But you can have special cases where you can optimize your app by making them run concurrently or at the same time instead. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I have here is a very simple application that we want to optimize within Power Apps. Here's how it works. A user types in a phrase here, and the Run Sequence button does a lot of different things. So let's go to the On Select property of the Run Sequence button. And as we can see over here, there's quite a few things going on. We first set the variable start time equal to now, just so we can time how long this takes. We then clear the collection variable called output. And then we do these sets of things, which probably take the longest amount of time. We basically ask Microsoft Translator to translate whatever we put into text input to French, uh, German, Dutch, Korean, Greek, Spanish, and Hindi. And the semicolons over here, represents that this happens sequentially, which means we first do this, and then we do this, and then we do this, and so on and so forth. The last thing that we do, or one of the last things, is we take all of these inputs, all of these variables, and we create a collection from them that has the actual text that we want to translate, the language that we were translated to, and the actual translated text as well. And again, we do it for French, German, Dutch, and so on and so forth. We also then refresh a SharePoint connection that we have just to add an extra layer of processing time. And then finally, we set the variable end time equal to the value of now, because we wanna again be able to track how long this entire sequence takes, okay? And again, this is a sequence. You, you know that by the semicolons here, each semicolon represents a new function starting. So this hall happens in sequential order. Now, if we go over here and actually run this program, we can click Run Sequence, and we can see over here that what it does is it outputs a table again with the actual phrase, which is hello, the language, and the translation. We can see over here, we also refresh a SharePoint list that I have, and that this took 500 milliseconds. Now, obviously this didn't take too long. No one's gonna get worked up on something taking 500 milliseconds for your users. But let's say if these processes, which again are using third-party services, for, for example, I'm using over here, Microsoft Translator, what if these do take a long time, right? What if uh, instead of just writing one word over here, I copy and paste section two of the United States Constitution <laughs> over here and I wanna translate that. I click Run Sequence. Now that took a little bit longer. It took 1700 milliseconds, so about 1.7 seconds, but still you could kind of feel the actual change. If I copy and paste section three of the US Constitution, which is much longer, everything over here and I click Run Sequence, it takes exponentially longer. Now we're at about four seconds. So you can see the use case of running these functions concurrently because if you run them in sequence and if you tend to have very complex functions, it really tends to take a while. So now let's do the exact same thing, but on the right hand side, we'll do it concurrently and we'll see how much faster it takes. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. We'll click play. The first thing we'll do over here is we'll change this back to hello. And again, this takes about less than a second, about half a second. So then we will copy all of this. We'll bring it to the right hand side. Perfect. And now what we need to do is we need to go to this uh, on select property of this button and we need to change it to make it concurrent. So what we'll do over here after the clear output is we will type in the word concurrent, okay? Now the concurrent function within Power Apps takes in as arguments different functions or what Power Apps calls formulas. 
So we're going to make this all concurrent, which means instead of perhaps doing French first, then German, then Dutch, and so on and so forth, it'll do it all at the same time, okay? So we're going to surround all of these function in the concurrent function. Now, the reason why it's giving us an error is because the concurrent function takes arguments as formulas separated by commas. Here, we have semicolons. So all we need to do is to go into each one of these things and change them to commas. And for the last semicolon, we'll actually just not replace it with the comma, we'll just get rid of it because it's the last argument in this function, okay? Perfect. And then we'll need a semicolon at the very end of this because concurrent is technically a function as well. The last thing we'll, do, well, one of the last things we'll do actually is we'll remove refresh customer list from here and we'll move it to the concurrent function because there's no dependency over here, right? So we'll take this and we'll move it to over here. Okay, and again, the reason we're doing this is because all of these functions are not dependent on each other, which means they don't need to happen sequentially. They can happen at the same time, which is why we're doing this in the first place. Okay, so after we've done all this, we then need to make sure that we go over here and set this to start time two, and we'll set this to end time two, just so it doesn't conflict with the other start time and the other end time variables that we have. We're then going to change this from output to output two. And we're also going to come over here and change this from output to output two as well. Just so again, the variables don't, don't mash up. Okay, there we go. That is it. Let's close this function and test it out. We'll change the variables too. So we'll go over here and change this from end time to end time two, and start time to start time two. We'll then go over here and modify the data table to look at output two, because that's what this button produces. Speaking of this button, we'll actually change this from run sequence to run concurrent, okay? So now we have two things that do the exact same thing. One does it sequentially and one does it concurrently. So let's do a few tests. We'll change this to hello, and we'll run the sequence one first. We'll run the concurrent one next, and we can see that it's about half a third, uh, well, two times or three times faster than sequential. We do it again. Faster, do it again. Faster, it, takes, it just takes less time. Now, again, this might not be noticeable to your users, but if I go ahead and I copy, you know, section one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven of the US Constitution, I'm not even sure if it'll fit in a text box. Let's see. Okay, looks like it does. Let's see how long the sequence one takes. Wow, that took a long time. Like, that's a noticeable pause. Your users will not like that. So three and a, you know, three and a half seconds around, where if you run it concurrently, it's one second. It still takes a while, but you know that you're doing it the most optimized way you can, and the difference between one second and three seconds for your users can mean a lot, especially if you have processes, for example, that can go from um, you know, 10 seconds to three seconds, or three minutes to one minute, right? A three times multiplier is pretty good for optimizing your power apps and can get rid of a lot of the issues you have. Now notice there are some things that are not optimized here. If we go to this button, for example, uh, I'm not sure why it's in content language. Let's go to on select. We can see that these parts are optimized, right? But let's say if you have 40, 50, 60 languages, right? Then uh, you here you would do it sequentially, whereas here you would do 40, 50, 60 language concurrently, right? And what that means is that then you would not only notice a two or three times multiplier, you might notice a 10 or 12 times multiplier because you're doing more things concurrently than you were doing sequentially. So here you only see a three times multiplier, but again, if you have more concurrent processes that you're running here, whereas here you are running it sequentially, 
then you'll notice even a faster speed and a faster benefit of using the concurrent function. And there we go, that is the concurrent function and how to use it to make your Power Apps more optimized. Thank you for listening and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.